You don't want to see it. Oh, come on, man. It can't be that bad. No, you don't understand. The accident, it crushed my bones. It's okay. I'm sure you're overreacting. You really think so? Uh, maybe put the bandages back on. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, are you feeling it yet? The sheer overwhelming power of a good-looking outfit? If you haven't yet, then maybe I can help you out today. And if you have felt it, perhaps we can enhance your outfit even further. In a game this big, some of these things are super easy to miss along your journey. And so today I'm here to provide a look at another seven armor sets that you don't want to miss in Elden Ring and where to find them. First up today is going to be the big balloon-faced blobfish man armor, the Albanaric set. This armor sadly only consists of two pieces, mostly sad because it means that I have to show it to you without pants on, but at least from two pieces of armor, these are both unique and great for their own reasons. The chest piece changes your form to give you a little bit of a pot belly, but nowhere close to as thick as some of the larger armor sets available in the game. It is a nice middle ground if you want a little bit more to your frame than the average tarnished. Put some meat on his bone. And the helmet is just their head, which is hard to complain about, especially as it comes with a special effect, which raises your arcane by four in exchange for a 10% reduction in healing from your Flask of Crimson Tears. To get the chest piece, you need to farm any of the Albanaric fellows who are just wearing it. A nice easy group of four of them spawns near the Academy Gate town site of Grace in Liernia. Just northwest from there on some rooftops is two, and then two more above them even further. There are more similar enemies in the area, however, there are only four of them that are wearing this chest piece, and they are the only ones who drop the chest piece as a result. This is something that you may need to farm for a bit, but not too long as it isn't a particularly rare item and it is thankfully just one armor piece as well. If you ever want to make farming a particular item easier, then you'll want to increase your arcane stat as much as you can through items as that also raises item discovery. Use silver pickled fowl feet, the crafting recipe for which is found in the smoldering church in the northwest of Kaled. Finally, you want the silver scarab talisman found in the hidden path of the Hallig Tree dungeon by dropping off of the landing in the middle of the open chamber, landing in on the invisible floor, walking to the opening in front, breaking down the illusion wall in there, and then opening the chest that's behind that. The helmet of this armor set, thankfully, is not farmed, but it is in a bit of an odd location, behind the main structure of Volcano Manor. From the guest hall, site of Grace, head left and then up the stairs, then out of the main entrance of the building, tight left to find a ladder, climb it up to the roof, and then jump off of the back right of the section to a ledge leading to a secret room, in which is the Albanaric Mask and an Omen Killer enemy who drops one of his weapons when you kill him as well. Secondly, then, is the festive armor set, also consisting of only two pieces, but thankfully covering a little bit more of the bottom half. This is just a nice, pleasant design cloth outfit matching the crazy dancing people in the Windmill Village, and, well, there is good reason for that. This armor is incredibly lightweight, as you might expect, and to get it for yourself, you'll need to once again farm a specific enemy, this one located by the Windmill Village site of Grace in the northeast of the Altus Plateau region. There are a ton of these enemies in the area, the ones with the yellow cloaks drop both pieces of the yellow armor set. The ones without cloaks will drop an altered version of the chest piece only, and the ones with blue cloaks drop a technically different armor set, which is the next entry. Thirdly, the blue festive set. It's basically the same, but blue cloak and a fair amount more ornate as well. And for a bit of a bonus, if you get the regular festive hood, you can alter it to just leave behind the crown of flowers, which also looks great. Fourth up today, we have the Duelist Armor. There is a red version of this set that I've shown before, but this is a much more muted color variant, which definitely works better for mixing with other sets. It consists of a helmet, a chest piece, and legs. When you wear the set together, the hood actually goes over the helmet as well, making quite a nice effect. There is also a passive effect specifically on the helmet and the pants only that makes enemies more likely to attack you, specifically in situations like co-op, or if you have a summon, things are more likely to target you instead of the other choice. Unfortunately, this one can only be done before defeating Malekith. It comes from farming the duelist enemies, but the only ones who drop it as far as I'm aware are the two in Lane Dell, the capital city. From the west rampart site of Grace, travel past the gargoyle and across the bridge, take a right up the path to see the first duelist enemy. After defeating them, just further up the hill in front of the Colosseum is a second one of these fellows. Defeat them and return to the site of Grace, and repeat this loop until you've got the three-piece armor set all for yourself. Fifth, then, the Blood 
blood-soaked armor set, which lets you wear full face and arm bandages absolutely well soaked in blood, as the name implies. The chest piece is just a nice, aesthetically pleasing, ornate piece, and there are no pants included. As you might expect, it doesn't offer a massive amount of protection, but it definitely looks interesting nonetheless. To acquire it for yourself, you'll need to make two stops, the first of which in the sewers under Lane Bell. From the underground roadside site of Grace, simply take a left out of the big door, and then in the distance on the right is a corpse and BAM! The helmet and gloves of this armor set. The second stop has to be done once you've reached the Forbidden Land site of Grace at the start of the mountain top of the Giants region. From here, turn back and go up the elevator, but be ready to jump off of the backside after a moment to find a secret chamber, within which is the official's attire chest piece, and further along is the Blade of Calling if you want that as well. Sixth up today is the Fire Prelate armor set. We had a half chunk set, but this is full on chunk and I love it. This is the armor of the Fire Prelate enemies that you see on rare occasion, the Fire Monk Commanders who shoot fire out of their heads. There is also an altered chest piece that you have to acquire separately without the red cloth that I actually really love the aesthetic of as well. And honestly, I love all of this and almost definitely will be working the legs and maybe even the gauntlets into my regular fashion sets. As you may expect, it offers supreme amounts of damage negation of all kinds. And to acquire it for yourself, you'll need to get your farm on once more. The altered chest piece specifically comes from the Fire Prelate enemy in Fort Laid in Mount Gelmir, right near Seedwater Terminus. You can just waltz right in front door without being stopped by any enemies, then the Fire Prelate is there. Kill him, then refresh at the site of Grace and repeat until you get this chest for yourself. He doesn't drop the other armor as far as I'm aware, so if you want the head, the unaltered chest, the gloves, and the legs, then instead go to the mountaintop of the Giants region, specifically the Guardian's Garrison, by the White Ridge Road site of Grace. A very short walk up from said site of Grace is a fire prelate surrounded by smaller enemies. Take out the fire prelate, loot the body, and then split. Return to the site of Grace and repeat as many times as necessary. And then finally, the eccentric set, which lives up to its name quite well, and I'm a bit of two minds about this armor. I really love a lot of the ideas within it, but the way that each piece actually comes together and forms the full set makes it nearly impossible to mix with other sets the way that I would really like it to. But hey, that's my own personal preference anyways. It is a pretty medium level armor set as far as the way to end occasion, and if you want it for yourself, you'll have to do a quest line, specifically the one for Sorceress Selen, who you can find first in the Cellars of the Waypoint Ruins. If you want guidance on this quest line as a whole, check out our video linked down below, but the important part is if you want this armor set, is that the final step to assist Selen instead of invading Selen. Upon winning the fight, you'll get the eccentric armor set for yourself. And that just about covers it, everyone. I've been Cotton Dinosaur from Rage Gaming Videos, and this has been another set of seven armor sets that you don't want to miss in Elden Ring. Are any of these going to become your new main set, or just bits and pieces mixed in a little bit? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye